Well, the uh, Retro Steam Tech Electronics Workshop has a new oscilloscope. But it's not new, it's actually about 30 years old, but it's new to the workshop. Now, if you've watched my channel at all, any of the early um, hi-fi stuff that I did, repaired, restored, whatever, then <clears throat> you will have seen the old favourite, which is this lovely old Hamag HM203 uh, analog scope, which uh, is currently showing my scope clock, which is a rather nice little bit of uh, electronic trickery, which allows you to display a clock on a scope, which has got an XY input. So yeah, um, this scope has been my go-to scope for the last 30 years. It was actually given to me by a good friend of mine. So I'm very lucky with it. And it's been essential <clears throat> in my fault finding and repair of electronic devices. Uh, I couldn't have repaired my uh, Commodore PET computer without it. It's just been absolutely spot on. But it is fairly old analog scope. Very good one. I'm, I'm, you know, does everything I wanted it to do. Um, but just recently, I figured that it might be time to um, add something to the workshop which had a little bit more functionality. Which brings us on to this lovely thing. This is a Hewlett Packard 54600B 100 meg digital oscilloscope. Now, these were made in the early 1990s. This is probably about 30 years old, and. I really do, I've always liked the Hewlett Packard scopes. I like the green vector display. I like the functionality. They were very simple to use, very intuitive to use. Where I used to work in the, in the lab where I worked, we had many scopes, but mainly Tektronix scopes. We had some Gould scopes as well, and they were all wonderful. But some of the other departments had HP scopes, and I really, really like them. Now, these were horrifically expensive in the day. This, that, that particular scope you're looking at there, that was a two to £3,000 scope. And uh, yeah, purely for businesses. They weren't for home users or anything like that. But obviously, in the intervening years, the prices have dropped and you can get reconditioned second-hand ones of these for um, very, very little money. I mean, I, I think I paid about £100 for this one, which is very, very reasonable. And uh, yeah, they, they, are, they are absolutely great scopes. So what is it about them that is so good? And what can this thing do that the little hammer can't? Well, one of the things that's beautiful about these is they have auto scale. Now I'm feeding in a test signal, but the voltage per, per division and the time base are all way off. But rather than fiddling around with those to get it to come to appear on scope, I can just press the auto scale button and it appears. There we go. That's our superb display of the test function waveform. The other thing that it's got which the Hamag doesn't have, is it has a measure facility. So if I press the voltage button and we get all these options, I want the peak to peak voltage, we press that button and there you go. It slides across and you've got the voltage up on the display, which is saying 5.031 volts, which according to the test signal on the front there, it should be five volts. So that's pretty much spot on. Then we can also press the time button and I can select frequency and it's telling us that it's 1.232 kilohertz and it should be 1.2 kilohertz. So again, spot on. Very, very useful uh, functionality. It's also got storage facility on it and you could plug modules into the back, which gave it more maths functions. It's got one of those it came with. Uh, it allows you to do things like fast Fourier transfer forms on the uh, signals that are coming into it. Um, you can do, there, there are other maths functions that it will do. I probably will never use any of this, those of any of those functions, but the, certainly the measure and the auto scale, very, very useful. And these were serious machines that, you know, Hewlett Packard would design these for businesses and firms, corporates, and uh, you would, they're not, not for home use. And uh, they were, they had a reputation for being bulletproof and just superb uh, superb scopes and particularly liked by field engineers. But despite all that, the software engineers that worked for Hewlett Packard at the time definitely had a sense of humour because these scopes and quite a lot of the range of Hewlett Packard scopes at the time had hidden undocumented features known as Easter eggs and this one is no different. So. You press a certain key combination. In this case, it's print utility and second and third button on the, on the um, 
bevel menu and you get a very good game of Tetris. I'll turn the light away so that it uh, shows up a little bit better. There we go. Let's close in on that. And as you can see by the by the controls, you can rotate it, move move it left and right. You can advance it. So yes, you've got a perfectly <laughs> playable game of of Tetris on there, and yeah, quite amazing. As far as I know, there are at least three different games that were. Uh, hidden undocumented features on these scopes. Some of the models had a very good version of Arkanoid, the, the arcade game Arkanoid on them, and some of the more advanced models, at least two that I know of, they had a very very good version of uh, Asteroids, the arcade game Asteroids on them. So yes, the um, the software engineers at the time, they certainly had a sense of humour. I'd love to know whether they got fired or congratulated for, <laughs> for doing this when the company found out. But yeah, no, they are they are lovely, lovely, lovely scopes, and this is going to be a great addition to my uh, small collection of test equipment. So uh, I just thought you might like to have a quick look at it. Um, they are they are they are nice bits of kit. So uh, yeah, there you go. A new addition to the Retro Steam Tech Electronics Test Gear. A lovely Hewlett Packard 54600B digital 100 meg scope from around about the early 1990s. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.